Hey everyone, Nick Raboy here from MongoDB. In this tutorial, we're gonna see how to get started with Go in MongoDB. So we're gonna see how to establish a connection to a MongoDB cluster, and then maybe print out what databases we have, maybe ping the cluster, make sure we're connected, basic things like that in order to get us started when it comes to developing with Go. So as you can see on my browser, I do have a GitHub page loaded up. This is the MongoDB Go driver. It will be used in our demonstration. What I also have is I also have MongoDB Atlas open. So this is the cloud version of MongoDB, and this is what we'll be using in this particular tutorial. So the assumption here is that you do have Atlas, you do have Go installed. If I go into my terminal here, if I say Go version, I'm currently using Go version 1.12.1. So try to use a version that's that's roughly around that. Uh, if you use something a little bit more recent, I think it should still work. Um, but just note that this is the version that I'm using for this particular tutorial. So we're gonna do a few things. So first of all, I am inside my Go path. I'm gonna create a new project and I'm gonna call this maybe connections. I'm gonna navigate into that connections directory and I'm gonna create a new file called main.go. If you don't have the touch command, uh, just go ahead and create that file manually or, or however you feel the most comfortable. Uh, but all I've done is created a file inside of my directory called main.go. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to open up this project. I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code. I do have plugins installed to make my life a little bit easier when it comes to imports and IntelliSense when it comes to Visual Studio Code. Use whatever IDE you feel the most comfortable with when it comes to Go programming. So I'm gonna say code you'll see that I do have Visual Studio Code up and running. I have that one file in my project path. What I'm gonna do is I'm also going to open up my terminal inside of Visual Studio Code, so that way we have access to a terminal at the same time. But this is where we're gonna be doing all of our development. And then we're gonna be moving back and forth between our web browser for Atlas, uh, the various GitHub pages, in order to help us out when it comes to developing. So the first step, even before we get the Go driver for MongoDB, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say package main and we're going to create a main function and we're doing this because we're going to be using the go dependency manager called dep and it does require that we have some go code inside of our project before we try to add any dependencies so let's go ahead and go back into our browser uh, you'll see that i do go to the mongodb uh, go driver page if i scroll down you'll notice that the installation directions it does use dep we're gonna be using the most recent version of the Go driver. So if we go to the releases page here, uh, you'll notice that as of right now, the, the current release is 1.1.3. So that's what we're gonna be using in this particular tutorial. Now, if you don't have DEP installed, uh, you can go to the DEP project on GitHub. It does recommend if you're using a Mac like me, uh, you can use Homebrew on Mac. There are other ways to get DEP. Use whatever makes sense for you. So let's go ahead and go into the Go driver for MongoDB. And I'm gonna copy this line. I'm gonna make a change to the version to match ours. But let's go back into our into our project. What I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say dep init. So we're gonna initialize the project. What that's gonna do is it's gonna create a few files for us. I'm gonna paste in that line that we had just copied and I'm gonna change the version to 1.1.3 and I'm gonna hit enter. And it might, uh, it might give us a hard time. It might say that we don't have any, any MongoDB usage in our project yet. It's perfectly fine. We'll get there. At least it's set up and ready to go. So it's done. Uh, we can validate that it worked. We can go into the gopackage.toml file. We can scroll down and you'll see that we do have MongoDB version 1.1.3 in there. So we're done when it comes to the dependency manager. Now we can actually start establishing our project. So what we want to do is we want to establish a connection to MongoDB, so MongoDB cluster. So what we can do is we can say client, we can catch the error if there is one, equals mongo.newclient. And inside of that command, uh, there is a URI that must be applied. So what we can say is we can say URI and then a URI string. So I saved it. We don't have the string in there yet. The plugins as part of my Visual Studio Code, it did automatically import some uh, headers for us. If, if you don't have the plugins installed, just go ahead and, and add those manually. 
uh, and then uh, we'll proceed to moving on. So what we want to do is we want to get that apply URI string. And this is for Atlas. So we can go to Google Chrome or whatever browser you're using, open up Atlas, and then click on Connect. You'll be presented with a dialog that looks similar to this. Let's go ahead and say Connect your application. And you'll notice that uh, Go as of right now isn't in the list. It's because Go is probably the newest of the SDKs or the drivers when it comes to MongoDB. Doesn't matter, just go ahead and choose one. All the URIs are going to be very pretty much the same, at least for the modern versions of MongoDB. So I went ahead and I chose Node.js, I chose the most recent version. I'm going to choose Copy, and we're going to make some edits along the way. So I'm going to go back into my code, and I'm going to paste in that string. So you don't want to copy what I have exactly here because your, your cluster, it, it may be different. I also have a username and password that I've already established as part of Atlas. So I called it YouTube. And then my password was a very powerful one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And this username and password will expire automatically. So definitely don't try to connect to mine. Definitely use your own copy of Atlas. Atlas does have a forever free tier. So you can go ahead and create your own cluster and you won't have to pay anything. Um, but you'll want your connection string to look something like this. And like I said, you can copy it uh, directly from Node.js or whatever one that you feel uh, works for you. But it'll look more or less like this. So what we can do is we can save it. It's yelling at us right now because it says we declared client an error, but we haven't used it yet. So what we want to do is we want to, well, maybe first catch our error. So let's go ahead and say if error not equal to nil, means that there was a problem connecting. We can say log.fatal and maybe print out that error. Otherwise, we think that it was successful, um, well, at least when it comes to formatting the new client. So this isn't, this isn't exactly connecting, it's just uh, formatting the client. What we're going to try to do now is we're going to try to connect. But we do have to establish a context first. So we need to define information like how long should we wait before we throw some kind of timeout error. So let's go ahead and create a context. Uh, we're going to skip the error for this time around. Uh, I used an underscore instead. You can easily catch the error and print it out if, if one should exist. But we're going to skip over for the context. We're going to say context dot with timeout. We're going to say context dot background. And we're going to say in seconds. So we're going to say 10 times time dot second. So this would be 10 seconds. And this is a very generous timeout amount. Probably 10 seconds is probably too long, uh, but definitely use whatever makes sense for your own business requirements. So we have the context. Let's go ahead and say error equals client.connect. Pass in that context. And you'll notice that the errors went away for these because uh, we are now using client and we are now using context. So let's go ahead and see if there was an error. Uh, what we can do is we can just copy this line uh, 14 through 16. Uh, if there was no error, that means in theory we are connected and what we want to do is we want by the time that this main function exits we want to disconnect from the database and we can actually do that from uh, by using defer in go so we can say defer we can say client dot disconnect and when this main function terminates it will call client dot disconnect um, so it doesn't need to be the last line in our function uh, because we are using defer so in theory, we are connected and we can we could verify this, we can actually do a ping against our database uh, against our cluster. So we can say error equals client dot ping context, we can say read pref dot primary. We can check to see if there's an error. So we're just going to copy these error lines again. And if there was no error, that means the ping was successful. It didn't, it, we were able to reach our database. Looks like we're getting uh, an error right here because I forgot to provide the, the timeout context for the disconnect. It's fine. Uh, I just added it in on line 23. Now that we've done our ping, uh, we can actually try to run it, see what happens. Let's go ahead and say go run. Uh, you can say main.go if you want. And nothing happened. So we got no errors. Uh, as of right now, we can maybe assume that our connection was successful uh, because an error would have meant that our ping failed. So let's let's move on. Let's let's actually print something out. Let's let's maybe the ping we, we don't trust it uh, even though we should. Let's go ahead and say you know what we want to know what databases we have on our cluster, and this will give us peace of mind that that we're actually connected here. So let's go ahead and say databases, 
error equals client dot list database names. We're going to provide that context with our timeout and we are not going to provide a filter. So we're going to just say that we want all database names. So we can actually say bson dot M, uh, which is a map. And we'll get more into this in a future tutorial, but just note that if we just leave it as an empty interface like that, it's going to be no filter. If there is no error, so we're going to copy this error like we've seen previously. If there is no error, then let's go ahead and print out our databases. So we're going to say maybe fmt.println and we're going to say databases because this should be a slice of string. Um, so it should return all of our database names. So let's go ahead and run it again. And you can see this time around, it printed out all of my database names. And it's all right if this is a fresh MongoDB Atlas cluster for you. Um, if this is a fresh cluster for you, you probably only have admin and local. I do have other databases in there as well. It will vary depending on your setup. So you can see that in this 34, 35 lines of code, we were able to establish a new connection to a MongoDB cluster. In this case, the cluster was on MongoDB Atlas, which again, does have a free tier that you can use forever. Um, but we were able to connect to it and we were able to use it. And in future tutorials, we will see how to do basic CRUD operations, aggregation queries, chain streams, a whole lot of very useful things when it comes to the Go programming language and MongoDB.